All right. Um, I'm going to join, join Darren and go ahead and open one when he opens one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There yeah. Up, Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Hey, what's that? Uh, Milwaukee's Beast? <laughs> no, it's the bullshit that Glenn brought over here. Uh, some, some, what is it? Some, 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 some mother's milk. Some <gasps> vi- some Vizzy. <laughs> Oh, oh he posted God. that on his uh oh his my IG. Oh I was my like, God. he's ready. He ready, ready. These guys <laughs> are literally there are snakes in the grass. Anyway, Vizzy is is a hard seltzer that has vitamin C in it. Antioxidant. Vizzy, go ahead and yeah, write that check. He need that sponsorship. Let's go. And I would love it. <laughs> hey, and I would sponsor right, the pod, Vizzy. What's up? How about that? Your ad goes here. Mm. right all right so the combined collective we are back for another week we have not been canceled yet um i have darren brown with me i have the c team will smith with me and who um you're the c team will smith uh, oh, okay. you're you're right below jv not quite sophomore so yeah yeah i got you got yeah you. Right, right in limbo right in limbo and bust uh, your ass for, and bust your ass in practice Oh, yeah, definitely a bust your ass in practice type of guy. I know, because I was that guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, and last but not least, we have Patrick Theodore Donahue. What up? Theodore, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What up? Oh, so, oh, I'm crying already. That Theodore got me weak. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> not Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. The other Patrick. Patrick, well, uh, yeah. um things happening this week and once again it's another sad week for news so i feel like you know it would be in poor taste for us not to talk about this person um and i feel like this is the second time in a row that we've talked about you know people who have passed far too soon so um black panther rest in peace um how do you guys feel about chad (laughs) chadwick boseman Uh and, and Tell me where you guys were and what you were doing uh, when you first heard he passed. First person I want to go to is Darren. Um, heard about it last night, uh, right around the time everybody else did it. The phone just started blowing up and everything. I was at the house. Um, but to your first question on what he means, um, to me personally, I think that he's just – he was a person that showed exactly what the power of representation was. Um, a lot of times for people to achieve or to even feel like they can achieve, they need to see something that looks like them or someone that looks like them. So, you know, yes, it's fantasy with the role that he played as Black Panther, but um, that sparks a whole bunch of people and in interest in comic books and writing comic books. That also sparks, uh, you know, giving people um, the freedom and the the strength to kind of follow their own dreams and everything like that. So I think one of the saddest things about what I was seeing today was uh, all these posts where Black fathers and mothers were saying, how am I going to explain that Black Panther died to my kid? Um, so oh. that was a little bit heartbreaking. But he, he was a good man. Um, he gave back to his alma mater, at HBCU, Howard University. And, you know, he, he played many roles. You know, Jackie Robinson is, is, is one that also comes to mind as well. So just uh, rest in power. Okay. Yeah. All right, Darren. Um, I mean, that was, that was really well said, my man. Um, Will, what do you think about, you know, everything that transpired? Man, it's, it's – it's been real quick, but he seemed like like one of those people that you knew, even though I was just introduced to him with Black Panther. And that was what? Uh, no, no. I want to say Civil War, but it's only been a, a, a couple of years. 2016. Either way, it's been a couple of years. But it seemed like one of those dudes that you knew and it seemed genuine. And and I had noticed him, uh, you know, his, his physique looking uh, smaller and in more recent appearances and I thought something might have been up but because nothing ever came out you kind of just like okay maybe he was doing something for a role or or this that and the third but what really hit me was you know the pictures start surfacing where he's visiting kids in the the cancer wards of the hospital and 
And now knowing that while he was facing his own mortality and knowing it, he's still going trying to make other kids feel better about their life and cheer them up. And I think that just uh, that gives you an idea of the type of person that we're that we're dealing with. And it it, it hurts when those people don't get to live out their their life as long as you feel that it should be because those are the type of people that you need and and they get taken away and they leave the the turds at the top still breathing. So I don't right. know, man. It it really sucks. It just really sucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, to be honest, I don't even think I could say it any better than that. I mean, dude was a he was a great actor, man. Like everything that I seen him in, I liked. The thing that that killed me was like the the picture that I sent to the group chat of, you know, how skinny he looked and how people were making fun of him online, saying he looked like he was doing crack and this and that, you know. And it's just like like that that post. It's like you never know what somebody's dealing with. That dude was dying. You know what I mean? And like he's gotta go and look at people talking shit saying how terrible he looks. He like he fucking knows. He's dying, you know, and it's just just people are just heartless, man. And and somebody that's a good person like that dude gets taken off the earth. You know, it's like it just, some of the shit just doesn't make sense to me. But no, nah, I mean, I couldn't have said it any better than what you guys did. So, well, yeah. rest in peace, man. Well, um, by me, uh, you know, having aspirations of you know being an actor, being in you know <coughs> some stuff, uh, nowhere near to the magnitude that he's in. Like he was, he was one of um, my heroes as, as far as like you know, his, his acting style, his chops, you know, how well studied he was. And then like, you have these stories about, you know, um, Felicia Rashad and Denzel Washington, you know, giving him, you know, being a donor so that he could, you know, go to school and, you know, having that stamp of approval on his back and then, you know, rising through the ranks. Um, he actually got fired from Michael B. Jordan um, on a daytime soap because he felt like it was cultural appropriation for his role. So, you know, the, the Jackie Robinson, the James Brown, those things were like things that like those character studies are stuff that like I specifically studied. And when he did his round table, um, I forget the other actors that were there because he, he always was the type of person that kind of like, shined a little bit brighter than other people that were in the room. And, you know, you, you notice that, you know? So when you watch the the James Brown movie, like, like you see him and you're just like, man, he's really talented. Um, so I remember during all-star weekend when, when uh, he had a different look, he had a, um, a, like a, like a huge fro and people were already saying like, you know, he had a different look fast forward to April. Um, and I was having a conversation with some of my other friends and they were, they were saying like, yo, what's wrong with your boy, blah, blah, blah. And I read the article. They said that he was vegetarian and he's just always been a slender guy. And just to think back, and I think it was like April 16th or 18th or whatever it was when the article came out. And I, you know, just to think back and like what he was actually going through and for him to be strong enough not to use this for any type of personal gain or sympathy or whatever. And on top of that, give so many black kids and and black adults like me you know um the you know the 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 gas to feel like they can they could follow in those footsteps even though he's only a few years older than me the the black panther stuff is powerful we only had black panther in a cinematic universe and we have miles morales and that was another black superhero that finally got a, a, a chance to shine and if it wasn't for him breaking down the walls and having a part in the production of that with Ryan Coogler, then we wouldn't be as advanced as we are now. And I'm not trying to be long winded, but like shit really affected me. Cause like, like, you know, I'm trying to be in that industry too. So rest in peace, uh, Chadwick Boseman, man. It, and it's still, yeah. it, it sucks, man. It really does. Uh, 2020 needs to get out of here, man. It really it needs does. To get the hell out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah. And yeah, man. Uh, man. That, did you, did you see, I just saw when I turned on the game today that the coach for uh, UCLA, what's his name? Arizona, no, uh, Lute Olsen. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah, a, he, he passed um, away too. Yeah, that's another, uh, that's another one, you know, because um, I remember, uh, I remember Arizona, Miles Simon, Mike Bibby. The reason why I got 97, the 97 champs, yep. 
Yeah, the reason why I got – oh, the first time that the Nike Air Foam Posit uh, Pros were on national television. Are you ready? Are you ready, Will? Because uh, I'm about to just – Oh, get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> but, uh, this is what you're talking that about. Is, that, that's the, the Nike Air Foam Posit 1. And I remember the, those when they came out, man. Yeah. yeah. So, the, but the first Penny used people to wear, to wear time, them. The first yeah, time. Yeah, but the first – go ahead, Glenn. You got it. The first <laughs> person that wore them was Mike Bibby. And he was a freshman at Arizona in the 97 NCAA tournament. Mind you, their colors were blue and red. So me as a high school basketball player, I'm looking and I'm like, I want those. And that's, that's my story of Lute Olsen that turned into a sneaker story too. So Darren, go ahead, elaborate more. Yeah, so um, those were the first pennies, but Penny, yeah, just, happened to, Penny just happened to see him. They were, at, he was actually supposed to have a different shoe, but he saw him and he was like, nah, I want those to be mine. Yeah. But he wasn't the first person to wear them as Glenn alluded to. So Arizona was always a big like Nike school. Um, so they used to just give him random stuff. Um, and this was one of the things that showed up there one day and they were like, oh, we're wearing those. And like Glenn said, they didn't For even sure. go with the they didn't even go with the uniforms or anything. They just kind of showed up and they were like, just hoping. Yeah. If those shoes this. show up, you got to wear them. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah. If you, if you, even if your colors is like black and gold. <laughs> like, no, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're wearing those. Yeah. Hey, those hey, are the those ones. Are hey, real yeah. quick, real quick. Um, my story of getting that exact shoe, the OG of that shoe. Um, my parents bought me some $80 shoes. The retail on those was 180 bucks. And it was at North Riverside Mall. So not only did I have to come up with another $100, but I also had to call around to try to find out where they were. I ended up getting them from World <laughs> Foot Locker from North Riverside Mall. But what I did was I would, I got the shoes that, that my parents gave me, and then I would save up a few dollars. And then I returned the other stuff in order to get those with the lunch money that I saved from not eating because I wanted the, the, the phone posit. <laughs> so then I get them, I get them and my high school team is black and red. So I'm out there, I'm out there hooping. Hey, hey, and I'm out there hooping with some blue shoes on. And, and like, you guys can, can ask Ricky, you know, obviously I'm not going to say his last name, but we actually talked about this on Facebook and he was like, dude, I hear some blue shoes on a black and red team. You know, and that's that's the magnitude of that. And I know, you know, we're slipping on to the the sneaker slope. But uh, Lute Olson, R.I.P. If it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have been to the Final Four. We wouldn't have seen it on CBS or NBC or wherever, and we wouldn't have that etched in our brain. So, Will, my bad. Sure. You know, you know I. I no, think we I could. Um, Go ahead. No, I don't really have nothing on him other than you still don't eat <laughs> from, from a high school. All the way to now, this dude be eating lettuce and a little <laughs> spot of water on the side for lunch uh, <laughs> while grown men are actually eating. Water, but no, water we, dressing. Also, water dressing. He had mentioned uh, the Cliff Robinson. And that one is kind of unique in that that Trailblazers team, correct me if I'm wrong, but they done had a, a handful of people that passed from that specific team. And they're Kevin all Duckworth. young. Kevin Duckworth. Kevin Duckworth. Also, yeah, that that's had. right. Super early. There's another one. Somebody else. Um, who's the power forward on that squad? Uh, Buck Williams. Cliff. Buck Williams was the starter on that team. Hmm. He passed. I, him, did. Right? I don't know. All I, I know. I all say... I know for sure is is Kevin Duckworth passed EIU Panther. Remember that. Um, and I want to say a... um, Ala Abdul Nabi. Sad news of the passing of Cliff Robinson. He was a teammate and a friend. He was my big bro when I got to Portland. Dude can play. Too soon. Four guys from that team are gone. Just so yeah. sad. RIP, bro. Now, if you could just peel back the layers and let us know who those guys are. Isn't, I mean, he, I isn't, he, isn't he the guy that was guarding Jordan when Jordan gave the shrug? Yep. Yeah, 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 Cliff, yeah, yeah. I remember that. that I remember Cliff that Robinson. headband. I mean, I I remember him playing. I mean, he was a baller, but I just uh, he was that. He was nice at uh Connecticut with Tate George. Mm. Wow, Tate that George. is a memory right there. Tate George. Hey, this guy's uh, a fucking elephant over here. 
Final Four, I think. <laughs> did, did did UConn go to Final Four that year? I think so. I think it was 89. I think my, or- uh, my earliest UConn moment was Danielle Marshall. But, but, uh, Danielle Marshall. He was a goon in 94. He was wearing the Nike hey. Air Unlimited. Hey. <laughs> Jerome Kersey is another one from that squad. Mm. Jerome Kersey. Is that who it is? Well, I remember yeah, him, he passed. He yeah, passed. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You're right. You're right, Jerome Kersey. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever he would dunk, they mercy, Kersey. I mean, <laughs> I, I, and, and this actually taking me back. The, the Trailblazers had a whip back then, man. If you really yeah. Yeah. look at that roster. And they, they knew it a lot. They should have won a chip. They should have won a chip. They went twice. <laughs> they went twice, and they should have went three times but they shit the bed in 91. So they went in 90 and they lost to the bad boy Pistons in five, I think. And then 91, they lost game I forgot, six. I forgot they went to the twice. Lakers. And then in 92, they, they <coughs> got us. But somehow that Lakers team with nobody, literally everybody <laughs> was hurt. Everybody <laughs> was hurt. You know what I mean? That, that AC Green out there. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's... And that's for a whole different energy. That's for a whole different pod, bro. That's for a whole different pod. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah, big time. Would you take that squad over to Jailblazers? No. 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 Hey, no. Jailblazers was nice, man. They were. were. So Bonzi, Bonzi they Wells, were. Rasheed. Bonzi and them. Hey, hey, do, do you, you remember living. NBA Live 03? You did man, lose. You I'm didn't lose if you were the Blazers. Rasheed Wallace had a torch. A torch. I used to use them. They was my two K team, man. That Actually, I, I take Iverson. that back because because NBA Live 03, I was using Orlando because it was a cheat code. Because you had T Mac that was ninety nine, and they didn't account for Grant Hill being hurt. So they had Grant Hill like he was still in Detroit, there, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the real, like the real one. one. <laughs> so I was real out there bussing people. <laughs> I was out there bussing. Speaking of T Mac, I was scrolling through Facebook earlier. And you know how they just throw random shit at you or whatever. They showed uh, that whatever it's with seventeen points or whatever. He's that's crazy amount of points he scored in Houston, like two thousand five. Yeah, yeah, like twenty seconds or whatever the hell it was. Like that shit was crazy. I think oh. I was watching that game when it happened. But like um, I, I, I was, it was on TV. Rem- it was a terrible game me. to watch until that last nine, uh, like six hey. seconds or something. It was trash game yeah. to watch. Track. That reminds me. I meant to send this to you this morning. I was up watching TV. Have y'all seen that Wendy's commercial with uh, Reggie Miller? No. Yeah, Wendy, no. that sounds Reggie, like something I'd be interested yes, in. Breakfast, yes. bro. He, he's in the bro. bubble. He's in the <laughs> bubble. Hey, hey, my man is living <laughs> oh, man. in the Wendy's, right? Okay, okay, hold yeah. up. No, you got to see you, it. But I before tell you, you how. describe it, is it better or worse than the uh, Popeyes uh, Jerry Rice commercial? I didn't see that one. Oh. You have some Googling to do after this. Yeah, sir, wow, wow. Is, out. yeah I haven't seen that either. Hey, last, last so, thing I've seen of Jerry Rice was a video of him laying in bed with like three chicks with no shirt on, fucking eh, cracking up. You hey. know, saying, like, let's let's go. Or he was doing something. I think I <laughs> that was a Tuesday. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dog, you're out here lit, Jerry. I didn't know you were getting uh, down like that. Oh, shit. Right. But uh, so my man, it starts off with like the Wendy's worker. He's like, ever since Reggie Miller started living here, so he's living in the tag on Wendy's, right? <laughs> and, then, and then he pulls up out of the blues to, to the worker. He was like, uh, did I tell you I scored eight points in three seconds or whatever it was? What was it like nine seconds? He scored eight points. He was like, yeah. tell us. He said, yes, Reggie. You got to watch me. I, <laughs> I can't even go through the whole thing. Oh, but he's, living, he's living in the Wendy's telling him about <laughs> his eight points in nine, <laughs> nine seconds. And, and, and it's too funny. Speak, did, did she speak ask him where the beef was? Where no, the beef? It Oh, okay. Hey, speaking of commercials, bro, I I just noticed this, this the other day. I'm sure you guys all seen it. The Geico commercial where, where the dude is like half guy and like half motorcycle and shit, and he's yeah. on the treadmill. Hey, <laughs> the next time you hey the next time you see that commercial, look at the people in the background doing the workouts like on the shit. They're lifting all this stuff, but they have no weights. Like dudes back there <laughs> doing squats, and there's no weights on it. Guys sitting on the fucking chest press doing chest presses with no weights on it. Like, really? Just just. Yeah, just Bro. random shit in these Geico commercials. It's funny as hey. hell, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And he was on the treadmill, but he's a motorcycle, right? Hey, so because he, it was he's never going to be was tired. Rain, well, because it was <laughs> rain, it was rain, it was raining outside, and he couldn't go ride. The dude was like half half hour limit, buddy. He's like, tell that to the rain. Hey, when I see that shit, I fucking, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking fell out. Right. 
I think all them joints is funny. He was like, uh, what's the one? He was like, nah, a motorcycle on top, a human on bottom. <laughs> hey, hey, a dude was like, <laughs> and a dude was like, he was like, he was like, he was like, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Hey, but Fair yeah, enough. check it out. Next time you guys, next time hey. you guys see it, just look at the guys working out in the back. They got no weights on, on their shit. I was, hey, but I've seen that. I was like, what the hell's going on with this commercial, <laughs> man? Just weird shit. I had a good ass laugh. Uh, uh, the wedding crash. Listening to it. Listening to a different fucking uh, uh, podcast, and dude was saying uh, the JVP. He was talking about how Trump was saying they're building ten miles of the fucking border wall. Oh and yeah, and then he got there. fact checked. Yeah, it's like he's just up there saying whatever the fuck he wants, bro. Like a part of me, a part of me respects just how little he gives a fuck about anything in the world because this is like he's just a fucking he, he's a wild dude. But like I hate that's him called, because like he's called our extreme. president. That's called extreme narcissism. Like, well, yeah, it's just like hey, he's like it'll be raining outside. He's like it's a fucking beautiful day. It's sunny. You don't see the sun. Best day like, ever. Hey, hey, and they'll like, be like, like, dog, it's raining. It's a hurricane. Yeah. Like, and, and, and guess what? Yeah. And guess what? Perfect the Democrats day. are going to ruin everything. You're right. Wait, we and just then, said it yeah. was rain. I know, I know. But you talk about good. it being wild and everything. Uh, his speech the other night was I actually boring. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. He, he was like, blah, 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 Joe Biden, blah, 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 blah. He mentioned, he mentioned Joe Biden 41 times in his speech. Yeah. And, and yeah, to give it some context, he, he mentioned um, Hillary 16 times last time. <coughs> or the funniest thing about that, though, during his is that they whatever, showed, rally or whatever. They were trying to show how dangerous Joe Biden's America is going to be and if he gets elected. And, they, and that's all a video from Trump's America. You know right. what I mean? So yeah. it's like, but he like, pivoted and he was like, "This is happening in Democratic run, yeah, uh, states I, and cities." So I he's like, "My America Wisconsin, is cool. Wisconsin's not yeah. exactly. My, my America he, is cool." I heard some of that video was from like Spain, though it wasn't even in the United States. I would they all do that. Like that. I wouldn't all do that. Them. Like some, you know some me, stock video. CNN's been caught a bunch of times doing that shit. That's why he's like fake news because like they, they they're catching these people doing just stupid shit all the time, man. But it's so it's like you don't think you're gonna get caught using a fucking fake riot video, you know, or like just stupid shit. The news, all that, it just aggravates me. That's why I don't watch any of it. Ooh, I Russ. Mean, I mean, but, yeah, I didn't I didn't I watch know. much of the RNC in real time. But I tried to like. As watch you the... shouldn't, motherfucker. <laughs> Look, man, I try to pride myself. I try to pride myself on looking at both sides, even if you already know what your decision is gonna be. If it's like, tough, man. if somebody if... brings up a topic from the other side, you should be able to be like, "Yeah, I saw that, and this is what I think about it." I, I so, agree like, with you to an extent, but like, you don't be like. Uh, the earth is round, but I'm going to listen to these flat earthers just to see if they have a point. I feel like, and, and based off of that, that's why I didn't watch it in real time because I was like, I'm not going to be able to consume this in real time. Like, I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, but I, mean, I did. I did watch um, most of uh, Trump's speech. I yeah. did watch most of that in real time. Yeah. Well, you and almost have my own commentary. You almost have to kind of listen to. How are even your when ears? Somebody's a com- <laughs> even when How somebody's are your a complete ears fucking. That? No, even I'm when sorry, somebody's ahead, a complete Pat. fucking idiot, like when even when somebody's a complete fucking idiot, and like the flat earthers, you still almost have to kind of listen to them just so you know like what type of person you're yes. dealing with. You know what I, I mean? I agree so with like that, you Pat. can't you can't just dismiss no. somebody just because they're saying well, some crazy shit. Like you just be like, oh, okay, I just know. I give you, I you a good. I give you a good uh, you, you know example like, of that, right? So I could not fathom why people were so up in arms about. Black Lives Matter and refusing to say it and things like that because of the coverage that I look at, the people that I hang out with and the beliefs that I feel, right? I'm like, it's pretty much, hey, I'm black, my life matters. Why is this being politicized? And it's because there's a certain sect of the country that is painting BLM as a terrorist group. So if you have the frame of reference that people associate BLM with terrorist group, of course you're not going to say that. Of course you're going to think that there's all this other stuff going on and like everything like that. So, but but if if they're painting us as a terrorist group, we have to kill. We have to have some sort of a power for that. 
we're the ones getting shot and choked and stabbed and persecuted and like that just doesn't make sense from their perspective they are talking about the protests that have turned to riot they don't even reference it as protests they reference it as riots and um, they reference certain cops that have been killed allegedly by blm which uh also can be fact checked and found that that is either not true or from a fringe part of whatever well, see, movement that's that's another problem is is because you're dealing with First off, going back to your, uh, you know, the original thing that you said about, you know, you wanted to know what both sides feel. Um, Bush Republicans, Reagan Republicans, those are different Republicans. The Trump Republicans are a totally different thing. I got no problem. It's with a widespread though, man. It's a to, widespread. Listening to like, yeah. like, like back yeah, in the McCain era and listening to them talk and like having some sort of like a code or class or, you know, just common decency. Or you have some some speaker who is uh, just a, a lawyer who happened to be sleeping with his son that's just talking forever. I don't want to hear that girl. What type of qualifications does she have? If, if I knew Trump, he'd just put me up there as, hey, hey, Glenn's my black guy. And I'd get up there and I'd be like. Oh, man, we don't have enough time for me to talk <laughs> about that. that. You know what Ooh, I mean? Boy, like, but I got, I got like, some, like, like, th- that's I got some why, thoughts on that's that. That's why I don't even <laughs> want to hear it. I don't even want to hear. Like, I do my research to where I know, you know, like, like I'm not ignorant to the other side. And there's problems on the other side. There's problems with both sides. I get that. There's problems with the whole system. Say, I'm not saying that one whole- thing is, yes, exactly, Pat. There's problems with how it's system. set up. Because if it's set up like that and you got somebody like Trump that can do as much as he's been doing as far as the unraveling of, of our whole democracy, then there's something wrong with the amount of power and the power structure in place. 